Hello and welcome to a video all about Cambridge International Computer Science at either IGCSE or O level. And I'll mention the difference between the two in just a second. So I want to talk about how this course works and introduce some resources I've got to support. So as you may or may not know, there are two exams as part of this qualification. Paper one is your more straightforward one, just on the kind of mostly theory topics. And paper two is on programming as well as some other bits of theory as well. So both papers are the exact same in terms of the number of marks and how long they are, although of course the content is different. Now this qualification is a bit confusing because there are effectively three qualifications which are the same. Okay, so there are two GCSE qualifications, both are international, so are different to say the UK GCSEs. You can either have grades in the range nine to one, like the UK does, or A star to G, like the UK used to. Now both of these IGCSEs have got different codes and have got different websites, but the content is the same in both. To add more confusion, there's also an O-level. O-level is no longer taught in the UK, but used to be. Now O-level would be graded in A star to E, so with no G grade at the bottom, A star being our top grade, so it's nine. Now the O-level course has got a different web page still and a different code as well, but to be clear, all of the content is the same, and so no matter which resource you find, as long as it's one of these three, and it's got one of these three codes, it will be applicable to you. But when you come to actually sit the paper, what will be shown on the front will reflect what exactly you are doing. But the actual paper should be the same, or at least the same content. Now, like I said, paper one is our more theory paper. It's got six topics with quite a lot of content you've got to know. For paper two, it's the same length, but is on the more applied topics. Although, of course, within things like databases and building logic, there is theory to know which will get applied in this paper. Now, to be really clear, you do need to have practical programming experience for this paper. It won't say write Python code or write Java code. It might say write program code, but you could write pseudocode. Now, I say you need to have this experience because I think it's going to be very difficult to answer some of the questions if you don't really know how to program. And in particular, the final question, which is always going to be 15 marks, is writing a program based on a scenario. And if you've barely done any programming, that is going to be quite a big ask. So it's important you have done actual programming in an actual programming language. In terms of how you might prepare for these exams, well, I've got playlists which cover the content for these exams. Make sure you use the latest playlist because I will tweak it over time and just using random videos you find might not be suitable. But for paper two, definitely do still put time into learning and practicing programming because it is still needed for paper two. You could get away with just pseudocode, but you've got to know programming as well. So I've got stuff on Python. I'll put some links in the description of some useful resources, but make sure you don't neglect the programming, even if you are revising the theory. So hopefully these exams do go well if you are studying this qualification and hopefully what I've got available to help does help. So good luck.